Welcome to the second episode of the second season of Heart to Heart with Michael, a program for the brief community. Our purpose is to empower our community with resources, support, and advocacy information. This season's theme is the celebration of life, and we feel fortunate to have Cameron Miller on our program today. Today's episode is called Enjoy the Ride, the Sean Miller story, and we'll be talking with Cameron about how he celebrates his son, Sean, the foundation he established in his honor, and we'll finish up by talking about some projects that are in the works to commemorate Sean and his life. Son, heart warrior, and most importantly, a living example of what it means to never give up, Sean Miller from Australia was born with a very complex heart defect requiring a heart transplant. Through his battle, Sean and his father, Cameron, teamed up to overcome many obstacles, However, through unfortunate circumstances, Sean passed away but has left a lasting legacy for others. Using this as a springboard, Cameron has initiated the Sean Miller Foundation to bring awareness and support to others, which originated from Sean's YouTube farewell. Eight million views later, Cameron's video became a reminder of the much-needed efforts and awareness in the fight for his life's philosophy to enjoy the ride. Sean's message, that the goal is not to live forever, but to create something that will live forever, is his legacy, and is indeed immortalized through Cameron's efforts. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Michael Cameron. Very happy to have you here. Thank you very much. We have a lot to unpack here, so let's just get right to it. Tell us about your journey with Sean battling his CHD. Uh, it's, it's been a long, um, arduous one. Um, Sean was uh, born with uh, CHD, mm-hmm. um, and he is is uh, he went through quite a battle when he was when he was young and. Um, and it wasn't until um, he went into heart failure and, and he, we had to have his first heart transplant, which I can't believe um, it only took two days to get a heart for him, which was amazing. Wow. So, yeah, Sean had his first heart transplant at eight years old um, and it became quite an advocate for CHD um, and become a public speaker in his own right. Um, you know, and, you know, he always spoke about living life to the fullest and that was his motto, always live life to the fullest. Basically, he had um, he had his first heart transplant at eight years old and uh, everything was going really, really well for quite a while and um, and basically then they did a biopsy and they found that he had um, what's called a chronic heart rejection. Um, that first, the, the first transplant had rejected itself. So he needed another transplant. So he had to have another transplant by the time he was 13 years old. Um, And, you know, he he went through... He used to to, to freak me out. He used to have operations and come out of them. And, you know, it was like two weeks later, he'd be back at school. He'd be... Yeah, it's phenomenal. His his healing powers were absolutely amazing. So he had to have a a second heart transplant at 13 years old. Um, you know, which which we, which took us about six months this time, wow. um, and you know he still became a public. He, he was doing public speaking. Um, he became a um, ambassador um, for Hard Kids. Um, he be, you know, started becoming a, quite a, a public speaker in in himself. So all, all of this while he time, was waiting for a heart. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did a lot of public speaking um, about uh, about what he would go through, and you can actually check one of his speeches out on on our foundation YouTube page, the Sean Miller twenty three ninety five. You can see him talking about his life. So he was he was sort of a star in his own right. He could he could get in front of a crowd and and talk to people about what he's been through and his journey, and um, and he always encouraged people. Um, I remember. Um, when he was 13, he was talking to this woman from Alabama. From, he'd just lost her son and, you know, he'd come home from school and, and he'd be on the computer helping her. And um, and to this to this day, I speak to her and she said if it wasn't for Sean, she was thinking about suicide and um, ending mm-hmm. her life. And it wasn't for Sean, she would have ended her life. Um, well, what did, she, what did, what did so, he say to her in general? What was the kind of message that he was putting out there? He was just talking to her... Um, um, about life and saying, look, you know, I, I understand that um, that you lost your son Nathan, and you know he was a beautiful boy, and um, you know, but you know, but you do know you're going to see your son again, and he he just p- basically put put that message message out all the all the time, um, and I believe um, when and this he become very empowered um the night and I'll never forget this as long as I live and he speaks about I'm speaking about that in my book at the moment 
I'll tell you something very powerful what happened to him when he was eight years old. Um, the day that I brought him in to the hospital and he had, was having major, major heart failure, to the next day, the next night, it was about 11 o'clock at night, it was raining in Melbourne, Australia, and um, I went down on my knees outside the hospital and I sort of basically prayed and that, you know, that 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 saved my son. And, and um, about half an hour later, I walked into the hospital, back into the hospital, and, um, you know, Sean was not well, not get, not, and um, he started looking looking to the roof of the hospital, and he started talking to somebody, and I was trying to, and I'm trying to listen to what he was saying, and it this happened for 15 minutes, oh my God. and he, then he turned to me and goes, Dad, everything's going to be okay. I've just walked through this light and saw this old man. And he told me to go away and be positive. You've got work to do. And five minutes wow. later, the doctor come out and said, we've got a heart for your son. Wow. Now, yeah. I've got to ask yeah. you, I've got to, he's, he's been giving this advice to all these other people and he's been sending encouragement to others. Now that he's gone, is he encouraging you in the same way? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He, he gave me a lot of advice before he passed away. Um, you know, and um, and one of it was, you know, I want you to, to to live live. You know, I've left my legacy, Dad, and I want you to um, to basically, uh, you know, to to put this legacy together, and um, and that's the reason I put the foundation together, and and you know, and the other reason I put the foundation together that came from a dream from him as well. Like, you know, you really? got to put this foundation together, and it's got to be in my name. He said that. So. Yeah, in a dream. Yeah, last year. Yeah. So, because um, I had no idea about foundations and what to do. And, um, yeah, so it all come from a dream from him. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, he, you know, he's always, uh, you know, I believe he's always around me. Um, he said to me um, that, you know, before he passed away, people have got to understand that there is an afterlife. There is an afterlife. So um, I've become very strong with a lot of people that have that that are losing kids, and I'm very strong about helping them and 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 continue his his work. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm about now. So I'm sort of carrying on what he did. I'm I'm on the internet too, ca- talking to people and helping people, and um, I'm hoping you know I'm writing a book at the moment um, called um, an, Aw- an awesome ride through a parent's eyes. I'm hoping that's going to help a lot, a lot of people. I speak about a big chapter about grief, about what I went through. Um, Cause Sean passed away in my arms as well, which was um, very tough. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so, um, you know, Sean had two heart transplants, basically had three hearts, two heart transplants and 1000 oh, operations. Um, so uh-huh. he's a very, very strong, strong boy, strong willed boy. Um, and, you know, he became, he did this YouTube video and at seven, you know, the day we got told he was going to die, he come, he, he said, I've got to go home, I'm going home, dad, and I've got to do this message. Kept saying, I've got to do this message. I've got to do this message. And I'm thinking, well, you know, what, what are you talking about, Sean? And, you know, basically I went to bed and he did this YouTube message and, you know, and today it's been seen by over 8 million people. It's called my final goodbye. It's totally amazing. That's- that's phenomenal, and I'm sorry, but we're going to have to sneak in a break here. But when we come back, That's we're going okay. to talk about the Sean Foundation, so please don't go far, and we'll be back in just Absolutely. a bit. Hi, I'm John Montez of NBC's hit a cappella show, The Sing-Off. In a cappella music, it takes a team to create a sound that many will enjoy, just like it'll take a team to help my good friend Miles Schweitzer, an HLHS survivor. Let's help Miles fulfill his dream and make a big enough sound to bring awareness to congenital heart disease. Please visit them at GoFundMe.com backwards slash The Miles Project. Miles with the Y. Again, that's GoFundMe.com The Miles Project. This is for Miles. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Michael. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our program, please send an email to Michael Lieben at Michael at Heart to Heart with Michael.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Michael. Welcome back to Heart to Heart with Michael. We're talking with Cameron Miller. And Cameron, in the earlier part, we were talking about Sean. Uh, 
Now, I'd like you to tell us more about the foundation that you created in his honor and the purpose of that foundation. Uh, basically, um, the reason I started the foundation is I started to look at congenital heart disease and I started to realize there wasn't enough awareness. And I thought the best way to get this awareness going and to try to find this cure for this horrible disease was start the Sean Miller Foundation. And because of Sean's video and the reach throughout the world and he, because he was on Perez Hilton and all this sort of stuff, I thought... I'll start the foundation in his honour, um, and uh, let's and, and try get as much awareness all over the world as possible. And I align myself with the best scientists in um, Australia, called the Victor Chang Institute, which were absolutely fantastic. Um, and we're aligned with them, and they're looking for the cure for congenital heart disease with the Sean Miller Foundation. Well, how's the foundation changed other people's lives so far? What kind of successes have you been seeing? Well, it's only early times, but basically um, people have become um, more open with us. Um, uh, you know, and as I said, we're, we're, you know, I've, had, I've done some media this year about the foundation and I've had a lot of people wanting to get involved in the foundation in America and all over the world about helping, you know, not only basically continue Sean's legacy and push his name out there, but to find this cure for congenital heart disease because... The, you know, there's too many there's too many kids that are dying from this disease, and um, you know, I'm pushing like like anything to find this cure and to find this awareness, and um, you know, I'm hoping with this foundation, I'll be touring um, the world eventually, and I'll be doing a lot of public speaking and getting the word out about awareness of this disease because um, it's a little bit taboo um, around the world, and a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but. It's something that we really need to start talking about that congenital heart disease is a bigger killer than cancer and it's got to be it's got to be yelled yelled out from our lungs to you know to basically get the word out there so that's what I'm doing I've got to ask you about this because CHD is a very, very common birth defect. Maybe 1% or more of all births have some sort of CHD from the very common and the very simple to some things that are very, very complicated as you and I both know. So why would it be taboo? I just, you know, when I got, when I started to go out there and speak to the media and speak to different people and you, you, you could see that people weren't, um, just were very uncomfortable about hearing that that many kids, like in Australia in the last seven years, there's been 100,000 kids die, for instance. Um, mm. So when I started to talk about this in the media, people just couldn't believe that, that, that CHD affects this this many kids around the world and um and that's when i i, I started to see that it, it is taboo and there is a lot of people that don't like to talk about it but i've become i'm, I'm very open um with the mm -hmm. media and everything i do and with different people and people are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable about talking about chd and the amount of deaths that that are happening and that's where where sean's video and and and, and him becoming this international um, sensation on YouTube has opened it up to the to the media and the and the and the world, which has been good because it's it's something that's I think really needed more awareness. Well, is this something that's that's you know where the awareness is low or or if it's taboo? Is this is this an Australian thing or do you think this is around the world? I haven't really uh, look as I said. It's at the moment. It's, it's I, I really can see it in Australia. I haven't mm -hmm. really. Um, had a chance to, to tour in the um, overseas yet, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's I think it's sort of everywhere. Um, you know, people don't want to know that um, th this many children are affected and this many children are dying. Um, you know, and w when when I came out recently and I said it is the biggest killer of kids under five mm -hmm. years old, people were just a, a, a bit of a gasp, and they don't they didn't realise um, and. And that's why I'm I'm a real big advocate of a bad awareness of CHD, and I think it's, it's a must. Well, you know, when you talk about awareness, um, it's such a wide hitting thing that you know the biggest birth defect in the world. If you walk out on the street in a city, on an average city street, and see two thousand people in front of you, twenty of them have a CHD, and of that, some of them yeah. don't even know they have it. So yes, I'm I'm amazed yes. that awareness is an issue. 
I really am. But I think it's great that you have a foundation that will do that. And I think that raising awareness is, is you know, critical to, to finding a cure. I, I don't think that we're ever going to find a cure for all of CHD, but I think we're going to find cures and, and, and treatments that are better than we have. And one of the great ways that we're raising awareness uh, all around the world is that the music that you now hear us leading us out to the commercial is from the Children's okay. Heart Foundation. And... Uh, wow. It's called Home Tonight Forever, and these are doctors who are making music. And from the sale of their albums, they're uh, raising money for CHD uh, research. And when we come back, we're going to hear more about the foundation and some of the bigger projects. Thank you. Home Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home Tonight Forever. Heart to Heart with Michael is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Did you know that most men suffer from beard itch, ingrown hairs, and a dry face, all because they're not using the right shaving tools? At woodraiser.com, we sell handmade heirloom-quality badger hair brushes that exfoliate the skin, open the pores, and stimulate hair follicles, which gives a gentleman a closer, more comfortable shave and a clean face. Visit our website, woodraiser.com, where you can learn more about men's skin care and check out our professional shaving tools. A perfect gift for your man, built to last for generations. That's W-O-O-D-R-A-Z-O-R dot com. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Michael. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on Michael's program, please email him at michael at hearttoheartwithmichael.com. Now, back to our program. We're back. Thank you, Cameron. We know that the Sean Miller Foundation has a number of projects based on what we saw on your website. Could you tell us about two of the biggest upcoming projects? Uh, Two of the biggest upcoming projects is um, one is I'm writing my book at the moment called An Awesome Ride Through a Parent's Eyes for Penguin and Random House, um, which I should have that finished hopefully by about March next year. Wow. And also in development for the last two years, um, there has been a movie, um, which the foundation's involved as well. Um, and it's by the producer who did Huckshaw Ridge. Oh, wow. And it's based on Sean's book called um, An Awesome Ride. The movie's called Awesome. Where is that being produced? And it's going to be the... Yes, yeah. it'll be produced in Australia. Uh, yeah. And it'll be the first be the first movie made on CHD, feature film. So based on Sean's life. Is it going to be more of a dramatic representation of Sean or is it going to be, you know, more of a documentary? How's this going to play? Uh, no, it's a feature film. It's part, um, part, uh, true story, part fictional, Mm -hmm. um, but it's a family film and, um, it's, 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 it's about, um, it's about basically, um, you know, it's, you know, what you go through with transplant, what you go through CHD, um, You know, a lot of Sean's life, and you know, it's a, there's a, a big message in the film. There's life after life, and that's the big message in the film. Tell us about how how his personal message of, uh, is going to come through. About um, it's not important that you live forever, but that you create something that will. How does that come out? Um, well, basically, uh, you know, with Sean's message, uh, he was always about living life to the fullest because you never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that that was his big that was his biggest message to every single person he ever met. 
Um, and that resonates right through the feature film, um, which is great, um, which they're shooting next year. And, you know, I'm hoping to tour uh, with that movie as well. Um, as, you know, w- you know, on Ellen DeGeneres shows and all this sort of stuff and yep. get the movie out. And, you know, because, you know, the reason I agreed for the movie to be made in the first place, because um, it's about awareness. Um, and it's the first movie ever about CHD. And it's going to be a major feature film which is fantastic. One of the things I like about this film and one of the things that I think the potential of this film is really great is because it's a very universal message. Um, yes. It's not just about people with, with CHD. It's about any, uh, any adversity or any other disease. People who see the end coming and still have to make the best of what they have and how they can face it either with anger or with some sort of um, hope. Absolutely, absolutely. And the movie's been classed from the director as Australia's Forrest Gump. Oh, nice. That's what the, yeah, that's what the movie's going to be like, Australia's Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense because uh, Sean probably went around and visited lots of important people and lots of – he probably got his, you know, his air time. Um, and it makes sense. And, and again, what, what the beauty of this is that the universal aspect of it, it's not a movie that only parents who have lost a kid to CHD are going to like. It's not a movie that only people going through CHD are going to like. This is something that really speaks, I think, to everybody on a very, very deep level. And that his message is important. You know, even if, you, even if you're not sick, even if you're not facing the end, the message to live life to the fullest and understand that it's not to live forever but to create something that will – Anybody can can relate to that. And quite frankly, the prospect of death hangs over everybody every day. We just don't think about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Sean did it with a smile on his face. Um, he was a very strong boy and um, he didn't get upset not once that he was going to die, not once. He, he accepted it to hmm. the point where a lot of people don't know this. Um, about, uh, about just after he did the video, we got contacted by the Texas Heart Institute. No. Oh. And they offered Sean a mechanical heart. And Sean turned to me and he said, Dad, I've had enough now. I'm ready to oh. go. Seriously? Give it to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, he Texas Heart Institute were offering us a mechanical heart. And he said, no, Dad, I've had enough. Give it to someone who's worthy. He goes, I've done, I've had my time on earth. So, yeah. He sounds like he was a very, very special person. How old, how old was he when he died? 17. 17. So he really did not have a chance to experience life like anybody else you would think. But in, in some sense, he experienced so much more in such a short time. When you, when you read his book, you, you'd just be absolutely amazed, um, you know, what, what he went through and, um, you know, and he, you know, he was always about motivating other people and um, giving that gift to, you know, to, to keep everyone else happy. Do you, do you think it's because he was sick or do you think he was just that kind of person who, oh, you know, just looked at the good of everything? Um, as I said, he, he puts it down to that night he had the epiphany when he was eight years old, when I told you about what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, he puts it down to that that particular moment that changed his whole demeanor on life. Whole demeanor. Finally, Cameron, if Sean were alive today, how do you think he would react to all of your efforts and everything that you've been doing since he's, since he's gone? Oh, I think he'd be absolutely amazed. I think he'd be, I think he'd be, uh, the first thing he'd say is good on you, dad. Well done. Um, you know, you, 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 you're, you're a warrior for all the other heart. Heart, heart warriors out there, and that's what he'd be basically saying. And because Sean was a warrior, um, you know, to go through a thousand operations and you know, you know, you know, to lose three hearts because of CHD, he was a warrior, and um, I continued to be that warrior for him and all, all the other, all the other heart angels, all the other heart parents out there. I'm, I'm a warrior for them. I'm a fighter for them, um, and I'm always about awareness. Um, and we hope that the movie will do justice to um, to a lot of people out there that have gone through this, and um, and we ho- also hope the the movie um, you know gives you know gives the message of there's hope. There's always hope, you know. Even after 
even after grief and you know there's always hope you know it's funny i don't i don't want to say that you're lucky because you're not but i in some sense yeah. in some sense i think you were very lucky to have had him and to have had that contact with him and to have some of him rub off on you this way i think you know, we're trying here in this season to celebrate the people that we're talking about, and I think this is an amazing celebration, and he's a wonderful person to be celebrated. And I hope that the movie does justice to him and continues to bring that celebration and that understanding to those who see it and all those who were touched by it and who've been touched by him. I, The two of you, I think, are an amazing team, and I think even yeah. now that he's gone, you're even stronger for it. And and I know as a bereaved father, I'd rather not be stronger. I'd rather have my child back. But, but yes. being things being what they are, you're an amazingly strong person, and I respect you, sir, and I'm so Thank happy you. that you came with us. And this will conclude this episode of Heart to Heart with Michael. I want to thank you, Cameron, for sharing Sean with us, and I hope his thank story so has much. inspired those of you who are listening. Please join us at the beginning of the month for a brand new podcast, and I'll be back with you soon. Until then, remember, our loved ones are still with us as long as we keep their memories alive. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you have gained strength from listening to our program. Heart to Heart with Michael can be heard every Thursday at noon Eastern Time. We'll talk again next time when we'll share more stories. 